I've been thinking about it a lot. And I'm starting to think that it's really not as above, so below. So when I say that, um, as above, so below, the things that exist in the ethereal, we're trying to manifest them down upon this plane. I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think that's why we're here. I think that's what fractured the tree of life in the first place. Because otherwise there would be that perfection and there would be no Malkut as we know it. There would be no kingdom here in the physical plane. We come here to experience. We come here to create. We come here to manifest. We're not here to exist in the same perfection that our ethereal bodies have as their home, I guess is the best way to put it. The above. That would be like the above. And then of course, the material plane down here on Earth, that's the below. So I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. I do think that there's a lot to as above, so below, insofar as the connection between the higher and lower planes does exist. But I think it is misguided to believe that somebody who is your soulmate or like a part of your spirit, because I think part of it too is like all of our spirits are not um, mutually exclusive to ourselves. What your spirit consists of is a conglomeration of all of these different energies that have combined to create the essence of who you are as a person. So there might be parts of yourself, and when we talk about soulmates, when we talk about karma bonds, when we talk about uh, twin flames, all of these things, that's what we're talking about, is these people who also possess parts of the same essence from which we have come. But here's the thing about the physical plane. The person that you are best suited to biologically reproduce with is not going to be your soulmate. That person is going to be too similar to you for that to be a biologically sound decision to make. It's my own personal opinion. That's as far as I really want to go into it because we're not really talking about eugenics here, right? Um, but rather this idea that we're coming here to experience. We're coming here to create and we're coming here to manifest. And if you spend all your time seeking out your soulmate, you're kind of wasting your time here or squandering this opportunity because you're going to be reunited with that energy. You have to trust that uh, outside of this plane. So what you're supposed to be doing while you're here doesn't have to do with soulmates and it doesn't have to do with reconnecting those physical those parts of the spirit in the physical plane it has more to do with the potentials the what ifs and i realized in my own personal journey that the what ifs had completely overwhelmed me like every single person I was capable of seeing like five different what-ifs with that, with that one person. And that's not productive in the long term because you're not then focusing on what it is 
that you actually want and obtaining that. Other people are going to have an impact on your ability to manifest the things that you want, right? And I do think there's something to people coming here in certain uh, forms, certain physical forms, uh, in order to have that experience, but I don't think that means that people deserve, like, rancid treatment. Um, or that that has to be part of the experience. Because again, we're not talking about eugenics here. We're talking about the physical plane, its limitations, and also its possibilities. So if you're talking about your physical form, we do have to talk about all, or you, each individual, have to explore things about the physical form that have to do with race, that have to do with uh, disability, neurodivergence, that have to do with the circumstances into which you're physically born, and also the physical interactions that you're going to have with other people, because other people, by default, are going to be a cross purposes to you. So, um, I do think that this is a good time to point out that I'm a very, uh, like, moderate viewpoints are, are very moderate, which means that I'm not a conservative, but I'm also not necessarily a liberal. So I could be your last way station before you go full neocon, or I could be the extended hand leading you back toward the light. Um, of truth, because neocons are not about the truth, they're about dog whistles, they're about obfuscation, and they are about uh, perpetuating their own warped view of what they perceive the physical plane to be. And I wish that liberals could do the same thing, because they are merely trying to provide enough resistance to that to dig in their heels, and that's not, that's not the way to make it happen either. You have to have a clear vision of what it is that you want. I do believe also... <clears throat> that it's possible people who don't really have a clear vision for their lives are going to start um, leaving. And that's not to say that everyone who leaves, I'm gonna call it leaving, um, but probably you'll figure out what I'm talking about. That's not to say everyone who leaves didn't have a clear vision for their life, because obviously, if the, if the circumstances are too great, and you don't necessarily remember when you're born why you came here in the first place, what it was that made you want to come here, but overwhelmingly, I think the answer is going to be boredom. So you need to think about it like that. You came here out of a sense of needing to feel something outside of the utopia of freedom from physical bonds, because that's what it is. When you're free from physical bonds, you can go wherever you want, you can do whatever you want to do. There's no limitations. 
And so that, you know, doesn't present any challenges that are going to help your spirit develop and grow. You have to come here to develop and grow sometimes. It's like school, but not really. Because it's not like how we think, oh, that's a bald eagle. Well, I can't show you guys because I'm driving right now, but I did just see a bald eagle, which is super cool. I'm driving through Missouri right now. But I'm mostly using this as documentation. I'm not paying attention to the camera. I am paying attention to the road. And obviously, I am not jotting this down in a notebook. So this is a much safer alternative to that. Um, yeah, when we think of like school, we think of like the punitive aspects, like that the government is forcing us to do certain things. And that is one thing that we do need to clear up of this particular plane of existence, I think, is the idea of punishment as something that is necessary. I don't think punishment's necessary to our development. I think reasonable consequences to our actions is a much more accurate and useful tool because the problem too with punishment is you're not just punishing the person who is receiving the punishment. The person doing the punishing is also being punished because they're the ones who have to carry out whatever this treatment consists of. It could be really awful. It could just be something like there are physical repercussions to these forms for emotions like anger and sadness. It's very hard on your physical form to be angry, to be sad, and it's important to keep that in mind because it is actually poisonous. Like outside of that being quote unquote toxic, like when you get angry and your heart rate escalates and your ear, your heart is pounding in your ears, like that adrenaline rush is not good for you. It's the same kind of thing as like long-term stimulant use that you are pushing your body in ways that are not good for it. And the same thing with sadness, like your heart literally feels like it's breaking. Right? And I'm not saying like, oh, depressed people, just cheer up because you're killing yourself with sadness. Because it doesn't work like that either, you know. There are, there are reasons for depression. Part of it can be, like I was saying, how when your spirit splits off from other people, you might meet that person and it, they might have like another purpose in their life that they need to fulfill that doesn't involve you. And that's why the two of you have come here and remain separate. And that's part of it too, that you might come here with a purpose that's very counter to what your soulmate's purpose is. And if you meet that person, you might feel depressed because you're not with that person. But you have to realize what's going on. And you have to really think about like, what is it that you want? Because if, if being with that other energy were enough for both of you, then you might not be here in the physical plane.
Uh, and you can say what you want about like our reproductive cycles and the gratification that you get from physical connection with another person. But that's something else too, because as I was saying before, the person that's going to be the best reproductive partner for you physically is not necessarily going to be your mirror. It's not necessarily going to be somebody who is part of that same essence that you've come from. It's all generally the same essence, like it all traces back to the same source, but there are differences. There are colors, there are shades, there are shapes, there are smells about things that are different. And that's why we have this physical realm, is to explore that, to manifest and create. Excuse me. So, don't spend all your time here searching for that. Um, and this kind of gets into sex magic too, because obviously, like, when you're involved in that kind of practice, that's going to be a big part of it. You want to find somebody who's generally on the same page as you as far as that is concerned, and that is going to change over time, because ideally you're going to be evolving and they're going to be evolving, and you're both going to be changing and you're both going to be developing and manifesting, right? And that's going to cause things to change shape change color, change the way they smell. And that's why you came here. So don't forget that. Um, but of course, like, that is meant to be enjoyed while you're here as well, because that is an aspect that doesn't manifest necessarily in the ethereal having these physical bodies that connect that can connect in that particular way. And how important is that to you? Some people that's really important, some people it's not that important. And for me in particular, I know it fluctuates over time. I'm sure other people would feel that same way. Um So, this is going to be a time to evaluate, because like I said, and this really, it hurts to know this, that people who really just came here with the buy the ticket, take the ride kind of attitude, a lot of those people might be leaving. And I don't mean... I don't mean like you're necessarily going to interact with any of those energies again. And you and I and everyone are gonna have to figure out a way to be okay with that and to continue on with our own defined paths and our own desires for our time here. Because that's really what it boils down to. Um, not necessarily that your desire should be driving like your whole life, but the things that you want and the things that you desire, that is why you're here on the physical plane. 
there are things that have to be fulfilled before you can pursue those wants and desires. But your needs cannot be the totality of your existence. You have to figure out other things that are more important to you than that. Um, and that's why the state of everything right now, specifically in America, it is like this other places, um, but America is a very young country and people are still figuring it out here civilization wise in a way that has not been done before. But just fulfilling your needs is not enough. And corporations are relying on having this workforce that will allow everything else to supersede their basic needs. Or like not, not allow any, okay, not allow anything else to supersede their basic needs. So that they can keep squeezing and taking more and more of that energy. And the more of that energy they take, your essence, your spirit, needs a certain amount of its own energy and drive to continue functioning here in the physical plane. And that's part of it too. That if you have so much of that essence drained and leached out of you and pulled out of you by things like trauma and abuse, systemic abuse, personal levels of abuse, different kinds of trauma, not all trauma stems from abuse, some trauma just, like if you and your friends are playing with explosives, none of you are committing abuse against each other, but something could happen that causes you trauma, right? Accidents happen all the time that cause trauma. Those things can take that essence and make it more and more difficult for people to, for the, the people affected to exist here in the physical plane. And if you lose enough of that essence, then you're gonna maybe decide that it's time to leave. And all of these corporations are draining. That's why we talk about Mammon as being like an entity to itself, an egregore of its very own. Because money has the potential to be a great tool but it is also used to keep people in bondage. Anytime that you have people existing in bondage, they're giving over their energy to others. And that energy is not being properly utilized by that other person. There's just de facto no way for that to be possible. It has to be an even exchange of energy. That's why when you are doing energy work, you have to charge money for it because that is an energetic exchange. Money is supposed to be there to provide a level of energetic exchange. And when people don't treat it like that, when they treat it as something that they're hoarding, and that they are keeping out of circulation, you start to see the kind of things that we've been seeing in this particular time period. People are just being completely drained of their own essence in favor of corporate interests. So corporations are treated legally like people here in America, but they are not people. Um, and they need to be held culpable for things as well, and they are not held culpable for very much at all. And that is going to have to change because civilization exists for the benefit of the humans involved and not for all of these egregores that are created by humans. 
um, something that has occurred to me recently is that uh, the internet and social media specifically are very similar to the Tower of Babel in a way that it's described in the Bible. And that initially, this is something that has been created to bring people together. But in that process, we all sacrifice part of our, part of our humanity. There's a depersonalization and a dehumanization that occurs. You see posts from people that you know marginally through these spaces, either about the very good things in their life or the very bad things in their life, sometimes the neutral things. It is not a complete picture. It's very difficult to get a complete picture of somebody from these very fragmented views that they're presenting online. And you're not able to emotionally connect to that, just de facto, de facto. You can say, oh, but I care every time this or that person posts something about something good or something bad that has happened in their lives. It's like, well, you can care about that, but you're not emotionally connecting to it because you can't. It's different if you know that person in real life, in the physical space. But if your idea of someone is purely based on what has been presented to you about them in this very structured and curated way. You're not emotionally connecting to that person. You're emotionally, you can emotionally connect to the egregore that they've created. And that's what makes it dangerous. So, that's something to consider about the internet and social media also. Obviously, I use those things. I haven't been on social media very much recently. Your car was on you, sir. Saw a cop. He looked like Ben Shapiro. There's your ASMR. And he was parked like out into the road a little bit. But you're supposed to get over anyway. I remember that. Even though in California it would be impossible to do that. Um, and the way that we emotionally connect to each other here in the physical space obviously is much vastly different from how we emotionally connect to each other in the ethereal. Going back to as above, so below. And that things are not the same. And they can't be the same. And they shouldn't be the same. Now, that isn't to say that you should be a scumbag and only consider your own best interests. Because honestly, like, your best interest is to keep everyone, keep everyone's best interest as aligned as possible. Everything is going to flow much better that way everything is going to be much smoother. One of the things that is happening now is that money is being used as a restriction 
rather at, than as a way to promote and aid each other. And that's very dangerous too. Because that's not what money is here for. Money is here so that we don't have to use the barter system, people. Like, we should not have to use the barter system to communicate with each other. Because, like, you can't order something from somebody hundreds or thousands of miles away reliably using the barter system. Your shipment gets lost. You can't just send another shipment. If you're paying that person in money, that money is a guarantee that they're going to have something tangible that gets to them. That's the contract. The money is the social contract. That is what it is there for. That's what that's how it's supposed to be used. It is not there to make you look good. It's not there to fill your swimming pool physically. It, it's there to fill your swimming pool because the pool guy shows up and gets paid to fill your pool with what it's supposed to be full of. Money is a tool. It is not a means to an end. Or money is a tool. It's a means to an end. It is not the end itself, rather. It's the second time I've had to like kind of correct myself we're keeping track. Um, so I hope that those things have translated clearly and that my initial saying the incorrect thing has not blocked that. Um, I have spent like the past month and a half or so with my ex-husband, my second ex-husband, not my first ex-husband. We had some difficulties in our marriage over the past year. I think a lot of us who ended up in lockdown together have uh, reevaluated ourselves a lot, grown a lot together, but have also ended up realizing that uh, there are things that need to be worked out before we can be with that person. Because it's not that you're necessarily even at cross purposes with each other. In fact, sometimes the more closely your values are aligned, the more the points of friction rub. such that almost everything else could be perfect. But if there's one or two things that really stick out and are causing a problem, it could really be a deal breaker. And so that was kind of what had happened with my ex-husband and I. And we're both now working on these things. We had worked together on the over this past month and a half, which has really been invaluable to me, and I hope invaluable to him too. He says so, uh, but one of the points of friction between us is that there is a perception consistently on his part that there is some gap in the communication between us and gap in understanding that is going to end up being a problem when that's not really the case. And so anytime there is a misunderstanding about anything at all, it will reinforce that idea, whether or not the misunderstanding is very small or very large. It doesn't have to be a big misunderstanding. You're never going to completely understand someone else in the physical space because your perceptions, your interactions with others, your way of traveling through the world is unique. 
to you. De facto, your perceptions are going to be slightly different from every other person on the planet. That's just how it is. That doesn't mean that you have to reach that exact level of understanding of every single other person in order for things to be good between you. But we have decided that, oh, this is the Can You Hear Music Memorial Bridge. That's really cool. I used to drive a lot. And honestly, like being in California, where you do a lot of your driving, like in LA or up to the bay, along the coast maybe, but not seeing America like this. I really miss that. Because I used to drive all over a lot. I was playing shows and Atlanta is two hours from Savannah. It's two hours from Augusta. It's about two hours from Charleston. Maybe like, no, no, it's two hours, two to three hours from Columbia. It's more like Four hours to Charleston, I think, like three and a half to four, four to five hours to like Asheville. I think you get the picture. You can get to like a lot of different places in the southeast really easily from Atlanta. And because I didn't feel a lot of uh, connection to the scene there, um, because of the kind of weird ass music I've been doing. Uh, I would have to go out and find where other people were that were doing the things that I also was interested in doing. And I did find those people. And then I moved to California, everything changed. Some things for good, some things, you know, I don't know that LA is really ready for experimental music. I'm going to come out and say that. I don't think any of you are going to get new music until you can figure out that you're listening to the same five Leonard Skinner songs over and over again uh, that you've been listening to for the past 50 years. So, you know, obviously those of you who view my channel, I think a lot of you are open and ready for what is next, and that's why you're here. But a lot of people right now are going to be really digging in their heels. A lot of people might need to do evaluation and not be ready for it. A lot of people are going to do that evaluation decide that they don't want to be here. Um, or, I'm hoping that more people decide this, what they actually are here to create and manifest and desire, and that they're going to work on that more moving forward. It's been a real close call. It has been a very close call this past few years, and we're not out of the woods yet. Um, the repercussions for everything that has happened, because I'm not just talking about COVID-19 and a global pandemic. I'm also talking about all the things that led up to that, and all of the things that are going to transpire because of that. And that's all very complicated because you have all of these different energies swirling around each other in physical meat space when they're accustomed to being able to do whatever it is that they want. Uh, all of those energies are kind of getting sorted right now because people are able to interact with each other in global ways that they haven't before. And so like, it might have been previously that you would marry somebody from your village, 
who had grown up very close to you. Um, and that was how things went. But now people are able to go and meet people from all over the world. So your soulmate might meet somebody from a completely different country, have completely different experiences, and that's why they came here to do that. That's why both of you came here. That's why all three of you came here. That's why the five of you came here together. Do you see what I'm saying? I saw earlier, like, you know, there's all kinds of, like, religious roadside uh, art pieces that people choose to put on the side of the road. Um, and there was, like, a whole little field of crosses. It wasn't like a, not like a, a piece of land field. It was like a little triangle by the side of the road, and it was like the field of the unborn. Those crosses were meant to represent, like, fetuses, right, who never made it past the stem cell stage. Um, and then next there was the sign about biblical marriage is one man and one woman. These things might be true, but that is an extreme limitation and an unnecessary limitation on what is happening here. I mean, part of the whole search for gender identity, which I... I'm like the opposite of a gender expert. The more I learn about gender, the more I'm convinced that it just does not exist. The more that it's just like a construct. And that the person that you're going to be attracted to, the way that they present themselves in the world, is going to matter more than the social definitions and the boxes that they are checking. Because I do think a lot of us are not going to end up with our soulmates, especially this time around. Um, I think I talked previously in a video about like the big karmic clearinghouse where you go and you can make contracts for this lifetime. You don't necessarily do that when you're coming into this lifetime. You can do that at any time. You can even maybe like meet a person in meet space that you might have made a contract with at some point in the ethereal because you, you're still like every time you go to sleep there's the potential for you to be going out into the ethereal. That's one of my biggest problems, as a matter of fact. That uh, you have the potential to be going into the ethereal at any time. And going and making contracts with people and then meeting up with them in meet space. And being like, uh, actually, I changed my mind. I don't want to do that. And then you renegotiate your terms. Sometimes you can cancel that contract. I don't really think there are repercussions the way that, uh, only that they're not going to then be upholding their end of the bargain and that their behavior toward you is going to change. Um, so you have to be ready to deal with that too. same things over and over again because 
because that is not a reflection of my evolution of spirit. Um, anybody who uses the term SP, specific person, you don't have a specific person. You get to decide who that is. And if you are obsessed with someone and they're not obsessed with you back, don't waste your time on them. That is not what you need to be doing. You need to be exploring and creating and manifesting. And if you're doing that, you're going to find companionship and camaraderie that exceeds your current expectations. And you'll be much more content long term with the outcome because they're potentially going to decide that what they want out of this lifetime is not to spend it yoked to you right you can do you can have that like a different time it's kind of like if you are at the movies, turn your goddamn phone off. You're not there to text with your friends. If you're driving your car, you can do certain things while you're driving your car, but there are some of them that are safer to do than others, and some of them just don't need to be done. Like, you don't need, unless you are literally like driving is your job and you have to be on the road 18 hours a day you don't need to do your taxes while you're driving right how many of us do our taxes really while we're driving i don't um so these are things to consider that you can't have every single thing that you want right this minute. But that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to be here because that's your choice. All of these things are your choice. But everybody also has free will. And so you ideally find the ways that your free will aligns with the free will of the people around you in a harmonious way. And that's where the magic happens. That was what created magic in the first place in my life, was finding those people. And I wouldn't have done it if I had stayed uh, only in Atlanta. Um, I don't like, um, I went to see this really great movie with my ex last night. Uh, the new Ultraman movie. Yes, there's a new Ultraman movie. It's called Shin Ultraman. And it's been playing, or it plays in like a thousand theaters across the world or across America, I don't remember. If you go to writestuffanime.com, that's where Brandon had found out about it. Um, and the way they put together the screening was kind of weird, but the movie itself was awesome. And it actually like touched on a lot of the things that I'm talking about in this video as far as potentials and your decisions, your free will, the free will that humans have, um, and how all of our individual actions uh, and manifestations affect those around us. But the reason that I brought it up in the context of this video at this particular time is that um, there were, you know, like maybe 20 to 30 people in the theater. It was not full by any stretch of the imagination. 
And I would imagine a lot of the screenings look like that, even if they weren't in Missouri. Um, I don't even know where they might have screened it in LA because now LA is at a point where you can do stuff if you have a lot of money to throw at it or you can try to throw a house show and not get it shut down but that middle tier is gone there's not like a good support for a local scene there outside of what has already been deemed commercially viable. There's one consistent noise venue, which is Coaxial, and I've worked with them quite a bit, but you cannot have just the one venue, and there are things that are holding Coaxial back that for legal reasons I'm not going to go into in this video. Um, but there are a lot of regulations that you have to uphold to even have a consistent and viable venue space in LA that don't apply other places. A lot of other places you can just throw a show whenever you feel like it. And I have done house shows in LA. I've done shows that, you know, like Rec Center used to be around, Handbag Factory. Um, those places aren't there anymore. You can rent a warehouse, um, but at that point, you're putting together like a major production. You are not doing that for a Friday night seven noise act bill. Like, you can, and seven noise acts sounds like a lot. That's a four hour show. And they're all going to be doing harsh noise. It's not like other places where you're going to get somebody doing their funky little pop songs and then spraying Aquanet all over their crotch and setting it on fire. And I miss that. It's getting harder and harder to find places to do stuff like that. I'm not a harsh noise musician. Like, harsh noise is something very specific. That is a genre. And experimental, harsh noise isn't even really experimental at this point because it's defined in what it is. Experimental doesn't mean that it sucks. It just means that you're doing something that other people are not doing right now. And uh, I don't want to hang out at indie rock shows until they put me on a bill. Because, like, if I'm going to take a nap, I want to do it in my own bed and not get yelled at by the bartender. So, there's a lot of sorting that's occurring right now. I hope all of you will be kind and patient with yourselves and with each other. Even the people that um, seem very ill-intentioned, I don't think that's at the root of what they have going on. I genuinely believe that most people go into things with the best of intentions. Even the world's specialist boy, and if I have to say his name in this video, I'd rather not. Even the world's specialist boy, I think, is going into these situations. Because I, I could be talking about several different people with the best of intentions and wanting to make their place in the world. You're already the world's specialist boy. Just relax and enjoy the ride, right? But there's gonna be a lot less of that too. 
because people don't come here to enjoy the ride. People come here to create and to manifest. 